Welcome to the lab, folks. So we got in. We got a parcel from DHL, and it is from PCB Way. So I'm excited about this. This is this could only be. Uh, oh, I need a blade. Oh, there's it. This is so much for genuine exact or exactness. Okay, this is uh, this is can only be the. PCBs for my little uh, 555 project. Building a 555 out of other parts. Okay. Hmm. Nicely packaged as usual. Does that look like pin boards? I got these in in black because it kind of looks more like a a chip. I don't know. Anyway, so there it is, the Unibyte UB555. Awesome. All right. Well, let's get the uh, let's get the parts together and build one or two of these up. All right. I think we've got all the parts uh, ready to go here. And uh, just on the PCB board here, you can see here's the uh, voltage divider. You set the threshold and the trigger voltages. Here's the comparator. This uh, gate here is going to act as our flip-flop and uh, along with this transistor and these two resistors is going to be the reset circuit. And uh, this here is the output section. And that uh, little MOSFET up there is going to be the discharge element. So uh, yeah, let's get started on this and uh, we'll build it up and we'll come right back. Okay, we got one all done up here. So I guess the first thing I'm going to try with it is, is I'm going to put together an a stable circuit and create a, an oscillator. And uh, we'll, we'll see how that works. Now what I'm probably going to do is uh, I'll use little jumpers and clips and uh, you know where I have to put resistors and stuff like that. I might just solder them directly on and you know add little bits of wires and stuff like that. So we'll see how that goes. So uh, let me uh, let me pull out a circuit for the stable multi multi vibrator that we're going to make, and uh, we'll make that up. Okay, so this is the the basic circuit here for the uh, stable multi vibrator, and with, this is the way we have it connected up here. So the resistors RA and RB, I've got 10k in there for both of those, and for the capacitor C, I've got 10 nanofarads. And this capacitor here is just to kind of stabilize the control voltage. Uh, probably do without it. And um, so both those capacitors go down to ground. And then I have pin, pin 2 goes up to pin 6. And uh, that's it. I mean, uh, we've got the one resistor between VCC and pin 7, which is a discharge. And the other between pin 7 and pin 6. So that's basically the circuit that we have here. And uh, 
So there's the formula for the, the frequency. Is uh, The frequency is 1.44 divided by the sum of the resistances. Uh, the reason we count RB twice is because uh, we charge through RA and RB and we just charge through RB. So the sum of that is uh, RA plus 2RB all times the capacitance. And when you work that out, it should be 4.8 kilohertz if everything is perfect. If I'm plus or minus 20% on that, I'm going to be delighted. And yeah, of course, uh, because we're charging through two resistors and discharging through one, then we should be 66.6% uh, duty cycle. So we're going to check that out. And we're also going to see uh, what voltage range we can run this at. I'm hoping for, you know, between uh, about maybe four volts and 15 volts would be nice. I know that uh, yeah, these things tend to, to fail dramatically once you exceed their voltage. And uh, I think it's about 16, 17 volts. So I don't want to go that high. And this operation amplifier here should be good from zero to 30. And then uh, after we've tested this circuit out, I'm going to build up this circuit here. Um, I'll put in a much bigger capacitor because I want to be able to test the reset to make sure my reset works. Let's get a, I'm going to get the scope on here. So that's a ground there, by the way. So I'm going to hook that onto there, onto the ground. The green, uh, little green thing here is, is, is the, is the, uh, ooh, little green one here is the output. So we'll hook onto that. And uh, we've got the power supply hooked up. I won't turn it on right away. I'm going to get the scope up on the screen for you first. And then we'll see what happens. That, you know, I, what I would normally do is I would, I would breadboard something like this ahead of time, just a little bit, just to make sure that I got everything working. But I, I didn't in this case, I didn't have a lot of time uh, when I did part one. I had to kind of rush my way through that. And I'm just hoping this works because it'd be awfully embarrassing if it doesn't. Uh, but I, you know, I've, I've used Operation Amplifiers before, I've used these digital uh, chips before, like this quad Norgate, and I've, I have actually used it to create a set reset flip-flop before, so I'm fairly confident. So uh, yeah, let me get the scope up on the screen and then we'll have a look. I have the power supply set up for 10 volts. Bear with me while I, I set the current limit here, make sure that if things go up in smoke, if they don't do so violently. So I'm gonna set it up for 100 milliamps, that should be fine, right? Okay, power on now. Whoa, look at that. So what do we have? What, what, what's our frequency? Frequency is 3.8 kilohertz. That's a little bit out of spec, but uh, I'm gonna live with it. Um, we got peak to peak output, 9.44 volts. That's wonderful, that's really good. That's uh, probably even better than you'd get with the, uh, the real 555 for a 10 volt input. And we've got a duty cycle of 66.13%. So I'm happy with that. Yeah, okay, it's, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Wonderful. Don't have egg on my face. Okay, let's, uh, let's try some different voltages here. Let me bring the voltage down. Let's see if I can get it down. Let's uh, try four volts. Okay, still working at four volts. Let's see how low we can go here. 3.9, 3.8. Uh, the frequency is beginning to go here on us. So I think, yeah, four volts uh, looks like it, uh, is, our, is our limit. Let's bring the voltage up. Back up to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm not going to go beyond that. There we got uh, peak to peak, 14.8 volts. So yeah, we're, we're, we're just uh, 0.2 volts away from rail to rail. And the frequency, frequency has gotten a little bit lower, is it? No, yeah, a little bit lower, 3.69 kilohertz. And duty cycle has gotten to 6.598. You know what, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. It's, it's maybe not as uh, precise as a 555, but it's pretty damn good. Okay, so I'm now going to set up for the mono stable, and uh, we'll have a look, see if that works. And um, I'm mostly interested in that um, in that reset circuit. So this that's the one thing that I am I am uh, least confident in is is this reset circuit. So you know, basically, what I've done is put a transistor in here, and what that'll do is that uh, normally it's it's pulled high. 
Um, so this is, is being pulled low and therefore it's got low on this input here to this gate. And so if you bring this down to ground, this should turn that transistor off. This resistor here should pull that gate high and that should send a, a reset into the um, flip-flop. And uh, we're going to test that out next. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I've got it configured as a monostable. And um, according to this, uh, for a monostable, T equals 1.1 times RA times C. Now, RA, I've got 100K, and C, I've got 100 UF. So it'd be 1.1 times 10 to the fifth times 10 to the minus four, which is about 11 seconds. We've got 10 volts on it. Okay, so if I ground the trigger, and we'll start the stopwatch here, And we'll see how long it takes before it comes back down again. Expecting around about 11 seconds, give or take 20%. So there, there we go. We're, 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 I wasn't watching, but we're at about, what, about 12 seconds. So that, that's pretty good. Now we can see if I, if I trigger it, can I reset it? I can. So the reset actually works. Okay, so the, the values there that I put in 10K and 33K work fine for the reset. Set, reset. Let's get another timing on this. This time I'm going to uh, pay more attention. Ah. Twelve point six seconds. Yeah, that's that's not too bad. So yeah, everything's working the way we expect it to. I'm sure that uh, you know the, the the problems that we're having with the timing difference is probably like these little ceramic capacitors I was using for the a stable circuit. Uh, you know they their capacitance changes, and you know I think we've got an average of around about five volts on those capacitors when they're they're sitting in that circuit. So. And their their values are plus or minus twenty percent anyway. So anyway, it, the electrolyter capacitor is not um, as subject to you know capacitance changes due to voltage across it. So it's a little bit more accurate, and it blows it out by 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 ten percent. So that's perfect. Now I'm going to set it back up for an AS stable, and uh, I'm going to try and you know set it up for a little bit higher frequency, and we're going to look at some of the waveforms and some of the waveforms and some of the voltages that you don't normally get to see in a 555. All right, we're back here again, about to turn the power on. This time I'm using a, a, a very expensive capacitor, so I didn't want to trim the leads. And we should be seeing around about 16 kilohertz with the way I have things configured here. And I'm gonna, first we'll look at the output, and then I'm gonna probe around in some of these places here to see what, uh, see what we can see. Uh, Okay, here we go. Uh, put on the voltage, 10 volts, 16.7 kilohertz. That's uh, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Okay, we've got our uh, yeah, we've got our approximately 66% duty cycle, and we're up around about 9.4, 9.5 volts on the output. Yeah, that's good. That's that's great. Okay, so yeah, we should let me get this probe off here. You should be fairly familiar with the uh, waveform on the capacitor and that's just about what we should see that's exactly right but let's have a look at uh, first of all the, the voltage dividers here so we, we can have a look at that so that's two volts per division there so we're up at two four six six points yeah, yeah that's by six point six volts which is at uh, two-thirds of the way up and down here we should be at 3.1 volts, right? So that's our that's our voltage divider. So the output of the operation amplifier, pin seven here, a very very short pulse. Just so this is the pulse that comes out as it uh, hits the threshold at the top, and then 
here we have the pulse that comes out when it hits the trigger point at the bottom. Here we go. Threshold trigger. Yeah, it could be a little bit more accurate with a faster operation amplifier, but that's about as fast as this LM358 can go. That will affect the frequency a little bit and uh, the, the duty cycle. So it's probably the reason why we're getting that 62%, uh, it says 66% duty cycle. Anyway, it works. I'm, I'm absolutely uh, thrilled. It, 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 it works. Considering I designed this completely on spec, it's, it's, it's nice to know that things work the way they should when you connect them up. <laughs> okay, well, thanks a lot, uh, folks, for coming out to visit me. I appreciate it. That's all I've got for you on this project. But I think I, th I like this. I like this project. It was pretty neat. And I'd like to thank PCB Way for making this possible. Without their help, this couldn't be done. And I'd like to thank you guys for coming out to watch. Also, uh, I'd like to send you over to Simple Electronics. That's a YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in it in the description down here. I did an interview with him a couple of days ago. So you can, you can have a look at that if you want to learn a little bit more about me. And we'll see you in the next video, guys. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.